All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. Happy Friday. Hope you've all had a wonderful week out there. I appreciate you tuning in, as always. We're going to jump right in and start talking about the topic of today's discussion, and that is going to be the next section on the overhead panel here, and that would be the signs section here. So kind of the same thing as the last video that I shot. There's not a whole lot of in-depth, deep-down system knowledge I can share with you guys, but I'll try to tack on a few little extra talking points or data points or whatever you want to say just to make this a little bit more more interesting or, or share just, like I said, a little bit above and beyond just the, the general you know switches and what they do. And hopefully make this a little more exciting for you <laughs> as uh, this one's probably not going to be terribly, uh, terribly interesting to most of you out there. But Anyways, we'll just jump right in, starting our way from the left to the right. The first switch that we encounter here, of course, is the seat belt sign. Now, you all know what it is, what it looks like, what it's there for. Very generally speaking, the times that we use the seat belt sign is from the, the point in time where we're uh, right before we push back the aircraft, taxiing out, taking off. Anytime during the cruise portion of the flight, we're encountering turbulence. And of course, um, when we're landing and taxiing in, up until the time we pull into the gate and we're at a complete stop, we'll turn the seatbelt sign uh, off at that point. So pretty straightforward. One extra thing that I could think to tell you about this seatbelt sign here is just a little bit about the, the PA or passenger address system technique when, when you're using this during the cruise portion of the flight. This is very much a, an at the discretion of the, the captain type of thing. There's, it's not really spelled out in our manuals anywhere as to far as what exactly you know, they will say over the PA, if anything. Uh, when they're using the seatbelt sign during, once again, the cruise portion of a flight when you're encountering turbulence. But my technique that I would always use, um, I always appreciated it when I was sitting in the back and, you know, what I had done when I was a captain and any time that at um, my current job, you know, I'm a first officer again, the captain tells me to make a PA. I try to include just a little bit of extra detail for people in the back because you have a lot of folks that are, you know, just kind of wondering and curious about, you know, hey, how bad is this turbulence going to be? How long is this going to last? So I I always think it's meaningful to give people just a little bit of extra detail and you might say something like, hey, you know, we're we're flying through an area where there's been, you know, previous reports of turbulence or we're transversing area of weather and we expect to be past this in 15 or 20 minutes where we'll have the seatbelt sign off again. So just, like I said, you, you see it done many different ways as you're out there flying around as a passenger, but um, I always think it's just, just a little bit of a nicer touch to give people a little bit more data when you turn that seatbelt sign on just to, so they know kind of what to expect. I, I think it just keeps everybody at ease and back. And as with everything, the more data people have, uh, I think the better off we all are. So one little point I wanted to make about the, the PA technique, like I said. Uh, one other thing I, I think is interesting about the Airbus specifically, and I think other aircraft or the newer ones anyways might have a similar setup, but when you use the seatbelt sign on the uh, the Airbus, you actually get an ECAM message on one of those forward displays there that sits right in between you know the the captain and the first officer, and it just tells you that the seatbelt sign is on. And the reason why I say this is a, a nice thing to have, or or a, um, it is kind of a help to us, is just the fact that you know a lot of other aircraft that I'd flown before, it didn't have this kind of in your face reminder that the seatbelt sign is on. So you'd have these situations where you know, you would reach up onto the overhead and you'd turn the seatbelt sign off and you get busy doing something else. And, you know, you might have, you know, been in clear, smooth air for the last 15 minutes, but you quite frankly just forgot to turn the seatbelt sign back to the off position. So, like I said, just kind of a nice to have, you know, feature on the Airbus there that I've, I've really found to be appreciated. And it's just kind of handy to have that ECAM uh, memo there for us to, to remind ourselves to turn it off or just the fact that it's on, like I said. So, um, like I said, pretty much just a, an off and an on position for our seatbelt sign here. There was an option uh, that my carrier, for whatever reason, decided that they didn't want on our aircraft, but there is actually an auto mode, and very simply, um, the, the seatbelt sign would come on anytime the either the landing gear or the flaps are extended. So, it would be kind of a, a different um, you know, philosophy of operation if you're ever using the auto mode. I'm not sure, uh, probably not many carriers out there, even if they did have the option of actually using this, but you might see that on some of the Airbuses that you're noticing out there, and, and that is what it's there to do for you. The next switch to the right of that is the no portable electronic devices, and same type of thing. You have an, an off, an auto, and an on position to these switches. Uh, the auto mode works the exact same way that I just described it with the usage of the seatbelt sign there. 
Now, as you know, the, the no portable electronic devices uh, light, it, it basically replaced the no smoking signs that were on all aircraft for since the beginning of time, pretty much. And you know, obviously, you probably know at this point in where we're at with aviation, I'm not sure really anywhere in the world on, on a um, passenger aircraft that it's actually legal to smoke. So they've just kind of decided that, hey, you know, we don't actually need to have a light there to tell people to do this because it's pretty much universally just not allowed, not acceptable for obvious reasons. So uh, the ironic thing about this, though, and, you know, this is once again, just I can only speak for my operation at my carrier, but we don't normally use this sign during domestic operations in the United States here. And for some reason, we're only mandated to use it when we fly down into Mexico with our aircraft. So um, we'll use it when we are uh, either um, descending down through 18,000 feet on an approach or, of course, you know, when we're getting ready to you know, leave the gate there, leave the departure station, flying up until we reach 18,000 feet on the way out. Uh, we'll have that the no PED sign in the on position. But like I said, it's it's kind of awkward um, just the fact that it's there and we don't use it. And our, our checklist, once again, at my company only, they, they make reference to the sign. And it's kind of funny because every time you read through it, um, it's just there's this really small uh, differentiation when you when you read the actual checks, checklist between, you know, sign or signs, which I've actually been kind of uh, it always made me chuckle because it's like, you know, somebody, you know, somewhere in the, the flight ops department made this very small differentiation that, you know, when you're only using the, you know, the seatbelt sign as opposed to the no PED sign, um, you will just phrase your checklist wording differently. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I, I just kind of thought of that now and I, I wish I had a, uh, a checklist example to show you, but but hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. So pretty straightforward with both of those two switches there. Moving to the right, uh, we have the emergency exit light area of this panel here. And now, while I'm talking about uh, this section here, I'll just I'll bring up another slide that we can take a look at while I'm mentioning a few things to you here. So, you know, first of all, what what are the emergency lights there for exactly? I, once you know, once again, it's probably a more or less self-explanatory thing, but the emergency exit lights are there to help you find an exit excuse me, an exit in a very expeditious manner in the case that, you know, we were in some sort of uh, emergency situation. You had to get people out of the aircraft as fast as you could. So it goes without saying, but just to give you a little bit more detail on what exactly these lights are as they relate to that switch there in the system on the airplane. So we have the escape path lighting, which I'll bring up the other picture here. And we can just actually, I can show you that one so that would look something like this here so the escape path lighting is the these are the the ones that run you know kind of up and down the, the center of the aisle here and you know obviously these are just designed to lead you towards a doorway or an exit and you know some of the guidance i remember hearing you know you'll hear this talked about um I think some safety videos will mention it. I remember learning about this as an aviation safety class at some point in time. But you know, they talk about these situations where if you are in a smoke-filled cabin and you are, you know, having a hard time seeing the lighting system, you kind of crouch down, you know, close to the ground. So obviously the smoke is probably rising up, you know, just naturally, and and uh, that is one way to kind of help yourself, you know, find that exit uh, that you are wanting to find as quickly as you po as you possibly can. So uh, the escape path lighting. Uh, the overhead emergency lights, these are just lights that reside in the, the upper portion of the cabin here. And you know, obviously on most of the airplanes these days, they have these kind of nice fancy like mood lightings that kind of keep a dim, you know, it's like this kind of ambiance inside the airplane that it's kind of nice to nice and relaxing, just, you know, just to be a part of, you know, during a normal flight. You know, certainly if there was an emergency situation, you would want to more brightly illuminate the cabin. So there's the system of emergency lights that would actually do that for you. So they would, they would come on, you know, in a bright white, you know, type of color to, to illuminate everything. Uh, there are the exit signs, and I have another photo here. Where I can kind of point those out to you. Just, just a gener couple generic um, photos here, obviously, of, of some Airbus cabins. But the, the exit signs, of course, are these guys right here that are illuminated you know, physically at, at the exit points themselves. This is, you know, the overwing section here. You've, you've got a couple above in the cabin to kind of uh, point you once again in that direction. And of course, there's exit signs around the, the cabin door exits there. There is also 
emergency lights in the lavatory. So we have these lav auxiliary lights that would come on as part of this system here. So once again, you, you have your normal kind of lighting that you know is is programmed and designed to illuminate the the laboratories. You know, with the usually it's it's kind of triggered so that when you go in there and you close the door, it turns on a certain light. When you open it up, it turns it back to a dim position or turns it off maybe. But we have this emergency light in there that would come on if you needed to you know illuminate that area in the case of an emergency. And there is also a couple more interesting lights to talk about. Um, there is overwing escape lights. So over these overwing exits, there's actually, you know, there's bulbs that will illuminate this, this area here. And there's actually escape slide lighting that, you know, in this case here, we have this overwing exit, but of course there's lighting as well on the, the cabin door slides that will actually illuminate the slides themselves and make them easier to see if people are trying to get out. So that tackles what exact lights we're talking about. Let's go back and look at the switch once again and mention the way the airplane is designed is that these emergency lights are supposed to come on. You know, there, there's some kind of actually technical conditions that need to be met for the emergency uh, exit lights to uh, illuminate themselves. But really the, the basic bare bones way to think about this is just uh, whenever normal aircraft electrical power is interrupted, that's when these lights will come on if the switch is in the arm position. So we'll talk here real quick just about the three positions that we have. We have an off, an armed position, and an on. Now the off position, as you would imagine, you know, we, we usually will we'll turn the switch to the off position when we're leaving the airplane at the end of our work day. And we'll turn it back to the arm position when we come back out in the morning or whenever we're operating the plane after it's been secured. So it'll stay in the off position normally when the airplane is just on the ground and not doing anything. We'll arm it, of course, for all of our normal flight operations. So that's what the on, or excuse me, the arm position is there for. And the on position is actually there if for some reason we needed to we needed to get those lights on, like in the case, let's say, of an emergency evacuation. And you might ask yourself, well, why might this be? And the technical reason for that is you might actually have these situations where the normal aircraft's power has not actually been interrupted because, you know, some systems are still working and just depending on the nature of the, the, uh, the anomaly that we're working on or the, or the situation as it's presented itself, you may need or want to have these emergency lights put into the on position and have everything illuminated just, you know, as part of, like I said, that emergency evacuation procedure just to make sure that, hey, people have a way of seeing their way out of the aircraft whenever they might need to. And the last thing just to point out, if we go over to our lights test slide here, you're probably just wondering what that other position there is for. And all that it is is a light, so it's not actually a button, so you can't push it in or out or anything like that. It just, it's just there to remind you that the switch uh, might be in the off position. So like I said, it's just kind of one of those things where we're doing our normal flight deck setup. Um, kind of going back to some general Airbus philosophy, you know, they, they say that when everything is normal, all the lights are out, it's kind of like this dark cockpit concept. So this would just be kind of an attention grabbing thing that if for some reason you forgot to turn the, the lights either to the arm position as they normally should be, or the on position, if that was your, your intention, it, that this light would just tell you that, you know, hey, the, the switch is still in the off position right now. So it would just let you know about the condition of the airplane. So the condition the lights are in anyway. So I um, had a few questions come in this week. And uh, the one of the ones that came once again from a viewer, Abby, uh, was asking just about the APU location on different types of aircraft. Now, we, we talked a little bit in one of the, the previous videos about the APU on the Airbus, of course. But he had a great question. Um, the 727, as you know, has three engines and there's, you know, the number two engine is physically mounted into the tail cone section of the airplane. So there obviously wasn't room back there to put this APU that they needed to facilitate all the functions that I talked about in one of those last videos there. But uh, it's interesting on the 727, they actually put the APU kind of up in the, the belly of the airplane between the main landing gear uh, so there's a there's an intake actually inside the gear well, and there's actually an exhaust that comes out on the top of the uh, the right wing, if I remember correctly. So it's kind of interesting. You you might see these other airplanes out there that you know had these APUs in very different 
places. And I, I think this is an excellent observation, and it's, it is interesting because, of course, nowadays, you know, we're so used to the, the twin-engined aircraft that just has two wings, or, or excuse me, two engines mounted on the wings. So, of course, it's, it's going to be different, you know, depending on what the design of the other aircraft are. I couldn't, off the top of my head, tell you on things like, you know, let's say the DC-10 or the L-1011 or other tri-jet type of aircraft, where exactly they are. But, like I said, a great observation because present day, it's pretty much standard across the board that everybody is mounting their APUs in the tail cone section of the airplane. So that's pretty much all I had for you guys today. I really appreciate you tuning in as always. If you like what you see in here, please hit the like button and subscribe. It just kind of helps the YouTube logarithm and helps people find me and helps me continue with this channel and keeping the discussion going and uh, keeping the engagement uh, going to make this this fun and meaningful for everybody. So like I said, I hope you're having a great day. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you again real soon.